It's about to get real. <laughs> What's up, y'all? Ron Kwok here, and welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are doing well today. Today is going to be a little bit different. Of course, we're going to get into all the gear. We're going to be talking about a lot of stuff. What's in my pockets, gear I would recommend, all that stuff. But today is going to be a Q&A session, a fireside chat with your friendly neighborhood EDC enthusiasts. Because I feel like one of the few times we ever get to interact with one another is during my Live With Purpose live streams on Wednesday nights. So, by the way, if your Wednesday nights are free, you want to ask me a question personally, tune into the live streams. It's always a good time. But because of that, I've accumulated a lot of questions over the months and years that I've been doing this. And so I feel like this will be a good time to answer, address those frequently asked questions, give you a little bit more information about me, my frame of reference. So that way, when you kind of see I'm making recommendations one way or another, you can kind of see what informs those decisions. You know what I mean? Like, why did I choose this certain piece of gear over what another EDC content creator out there might choose just because they have a different frame of reference, maybe geographically, maybe their background's different. All that good stuff. So, hope you're ready to sit back, relax, and let's talk. We've got our coffee here. Let's go. All right, y'all. First question is, what's in my pockets? All right. So, starting with the front left pocket. I'm right-handed, so I usually keep my wallet in my left hand pocket. This is the Reform Carry Zero Two card holder. And in my right pocket, I've caught first of all Vaseline. Got to keep everything nice and juicy. But I'm not gonna lie, my lips just get dry really quickly. So always gotta have that in the pockets just to make sure they don't start chapping and uh, it's, a, it's a whole mess. <laughs> Got the Orbit Key KO coupled with the Orbit Key Ring V2. And of course my car fobs this whole thing, even though there's a little bit of jingle, the keys here in the stack of the KO takes care of most of that jingle. So this is my key setup. I don't like carrying two keys at once, like two car keys at once, but for what I'm doing right now, it makes sense just because I don't want to like have to always swap out all the time. We'll get into that later. Of course, cutlery. This is the Glow Rhino Fermi. It is a $100 D2 flipper knife with a lot of tritium loaded in there. I don't know why I pointed to that pocket clip. It's not tritium. There's two big blocks of tritium on either side of the knife as well as incorporated here in the thumb stud. And what's cool with tritium is that you don't have to solarly recharge it. It's always going to glow and it helps you locate things in a pinch when you're in a dark place or a dark room. So I'm testing this one out. This is definitely, I mean, it feels really good and, uh, you know, drop point knife, that kind of thing. Uh, but this kind of leads into my second question, which is, do I really carry all my gear? Or if you ever ride a motorcycle, they teach you at GAT all the gear all the time for safety reasons. But do I really carry all my gear? Uh, the answer is no. Bruh. The answer is really no. Um, I've been caught out a few times where, you know, someone asked me for a knife or asked me for a pry bar, um, namely my wife, and um, I won't have, I wouldn't have it in my pockets or something because I just, you know, forgot or things came up I didn't have it. So shame on me, EDC creator. It doesn't have all that ready all the time. But honestly, like, I feel like. Yes, it's a good habit to be prepared all the time, but at the same time, like, sometimes you don't have the bandwidth for all that stuff. Like, if you're trying to get out the door because you're late already to an event, yes, you could say you need to prepare better and all that. But when you got a lot of moving parts, you got a toddler, you got things going on, this and that, you just grab your bag and go. Sometimes it slips your mind, you know what I mean? You want to make sure you have your car keys, your wallet, and your phone. And so, you know, sometimes I don't always have a knife with me, and that's something I need to work on. But... Do I really carry all my gear all the time? I try to. It's tough because, uh, you know, on social media, everybody's asking me, you know, what's in your pockets? What in your, what's in your pockets? And uh, I got to say that that's really for you guys. You know what I mean? Like this is here, let me explain when you get pocket checked or when I pocket check someone else, it's not so that I can check to make sure they got everything in their pockets. It's to show the viewers or the people that I intend to show that video clip what someone like that would be carrying in their pockets. You know, for example, if I pocket check Brandon EDM, you know he's an EDC content creator. You know that he's into minimalism and a minimalist style. And you know that he usually just rocks a t-shirt and gym shorts. You know what I mean? He's not going into the field, into the bush to be doing stuff. He doesn't work with his hands all too much. It's all like EDC, everyday carry, photo, product, photography, all that stuff. So, when I pocket check him, it's for you guys to see what's in his pockets. And I'll be real, I've been getting like multiple pocket checks a day and it's hard to deal with because 
I know from a concept perspective, if you keep asking me, most of the time, it's gonna be the same stuff. I don't get a phone every week. I don't get a new wallet every week. I may have a lot of wallets. I may have a lot of wallets because I'm a content creator, but I don't typically change out wallets all too often. One, because I wanna put the time into one that I wanna test and really make sure that it is gonna hold up if I recommend it to you guys. But also, you know, just like anybody out there, you're gonna have your preferences. And so there's just gonna be times or droughts, if you will, where you're not gonna have a brand new wallet or keys or whatever that you wanna try out every single week. It's just, you know, you got your go-tos. You got your preferences, you got your go-tos. I apologize if I don't answer every one of your pocket checks. That's because it's the same stuff, man. It's the same stuff. <laughs> Question number three, have you been caught out without your EDC before? Yep, yeah, so there's there's that. <laughs> I have been caught out with my without my EDC and I think honestly, something to remedy that is I'm gonna try and carry this more. This is the Wada Junior from Data Crew, and it got it got a lot of room for your REs here. But at the same time, it's small enough and slim enough. Check it out, slim enough. I think it's one inch, one and a half inch thickness, that you can load up your stuff and have it all ready for you and just throw it in the pocket. You know, I have gym shorts on usually. I don't wear jeans all that much, so the restrictions there aren't gonna be there. And so I can just throw this into my right pocket and if anyone needs anything, then I can just go ahead and reach in here and pull out whatever needs to be pulled out. And I think that's probably a good idea going forward. Cause then in my mind, I don't gotta be like, okay, I gotta go out, time to load up. What's my pry gonna be? What's my knife gonna be? What's my multi-tool gonna be? I just keep everything in here. Maybe I'll make a knife selection cause I like to at least rotate my knives out daily. Cause nine times out of 10, I'm not even using it. And then when I do use it, it's to open a package or something light. So I don't need to like choose a specialty knife to kind of put in the pockets to get that thing done. Never wearing a fixie, which probably should start looking into that but we'll, we'll talk about that but yeah what a junior everything here just grab and go throw it in your pockets so that way I don't have to worry about okay I gotta fill every single one of my pockets oh my toddler's screaming her head off I gotta give her milk I gotta pack her bag get ready to go all that stuff so a glimpse into the world of Ron Kwok EDC <laughs> All right, tell us more about you in context of what you carry and why you recommend certain things location age occupation locale type stuff like that okay so I'm 34, I have a family, I have a wife and daughter. Um, she's a little over two, so I, that affects my loadouts a certain way. I live in California, uh, I live in suburban, urban areas, so I don't have to worry about really like walking long distances or going into the bush or anything like that. So usually when I curate my stuff, it's the generic profile of the tech commuter. You know, I need tech to get work done you know whether that's a laptop whether that's a smartphone whether that's an editing rig or you know a mic and camera to get good shots for you guys do interviews all that stuff and so tying that into the context of everyday carry of course you're gonna have your edc essentials you know your wallet your keys your knife your pry bar your multi-tool but you know those usually just get light duty wear you know i'm not going like i said i keep using bush or bush crafting as like the uh, as the example here but you know I'm not camping on a regular basis or I'm not going somewhere specialized or doing something specialized where I would need like hardcore gear you know what I mean I think in this day and age everyone's got a smartphone or mostly everyone has a smartphone and so the tech commuter profile is really what that's geared towards you know usually I'll throw all my gear into either a sling if I'm working light or I'll throw it into a daily backpack around 20 liters 22 liters that has you know a laptop sleeve an admin hub for your tech accessories some comfortable straps if I need to get you know from my car to the coffee shop or from the coffee shop to the uh, you know collaborative common spaces if you're if you're working out there or doing a collaborative shoot something like that but now beyond that you know I get around with my car and uh, you know if you use public transportation that's along the same lines as well you know if you're on a one wheel if you're on a bike or you take the bus or something like that you know you throw everything into a backpack that's robust that's comfortable and everything kind of fits in there so that's where I'm at with that uh, California very mild conditions I usually don't need to worry about sweltering heat or 
you know, biting cold snow or anything like that. So my winter loadouts aren't going to be too crazy, but I do get cold easily. I run cold, so I prefer, you know, a nice oversized hoodie. So I'm waiting for the summer to end so I can start wearing them awesome hoodies. I got a few lined up. It's going to be exciting, but... That's a little bit about me. I went to school for architecture, so I've always been a creative person, building up some skills and realizing, hey, you know, I really wanna pursue this creative career of mine and really just see what takes off. The pandemic hit, I gave videography a fair shot, YouTube a fair shot, and thanks to every one of you that are watching right now, I'm able to do what I'm doing full time. So I get to bring awesome, juicy hype reels of everyday carry gear to your doorstep and uh, make genuine recommendations in the context of, you know, tech commuter profile or people who need to get things done with a laptop, some sort of tech, but also want some analog offline stuff like pen and journal, have a knife multi-tool pry bar on you, that kind of stuff. So. Uh, yeah, I'm a very creative person, so I, 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 I'm a visual learner, you know what I mean? Watching videos, all that stuff, but let's not ramble, let's move on to the next question. <laughs> uh, let's see, coffee break is what I need right now. Uh, what are your hobbies? Uh, right now, I'm really into golf, that's the biggest thing. I think that's another result of the pandemic, I think we just get bored and locked down to the point where... You just want to go out and do something. So I think golf was the go-to for a lot of people. I heard there was a big club shortage during the pandemic because everyone was buying up clubs. And uh, yeah, it's it's an easy way to chill with your buddies, go out for a, a round of 18 holes of golf, and uh, be out in the wilderness. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's groomed and, and curated and all that stuff, but it's fun. It's a good time. Uh, working on my swing. Dude, I went to, I went to Lake Tahoe. Uh, a few weekends ago uh, for a buddy's 30th birthday and he had a great time we had a good time but it was a golfing trip because we all in it and uh, the one weekend we go up there it just poured it was raining there was a thunderstorm warning all that stuff so uh, yeah anyway that was fun I scored okay for my for my abilities but oh man uh, after I came back I completely forgot how to swing I completely forgot how to play golf. I had to really rebuild my swing from the ground up, so uh, we'll see. We're playing again soon. Um, I'll let you know how that goes. But yeah, golf. Other hobbies include snowboarding, which I went last season. I haven't gone in a while before that though, but grew up snowboarding, love snowboarding whenever I can get in the snow. Mechanical keyboards are a thing for me. Uh, I'm in the process of building one right now, like with solder and custom, you know, like, swappability all that stuff so I'm um, stay tuned you know the, the setup's gonna look a little different you've seen the keyboard I have it's the drop alt and it's a 65% keyboard but the one I'm building is a little smaller so we'll see we'll see how that works out I edit and stuff too so I'm building this for funsies but also you know if it's not optimal for like editing and and pressing all the buttons, all the hotkeys I need. I'm a big hotkey nerd. I really need to make sure I am efficient when I'm editing and I don't like clicking here, clicking here, clicking here. Like I gotta learn my hotkeys. So if it's not, you know, efficient, I'm probably gonna end up with a bigger keyboard, but we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Am I going to Blade West? Hell yeah, I am. Hell yeah, I am. For all you guys going to Blade West 2023, I'll see you guys October 13th on the show floor. Uh, it's gonna be fun, it's gonna be fun. Um, Brandon EDM, that's his home turf, so those are his stomping grounds, so we're gonna go out there uh, probably a day early and stay a day late, but it's gonna be a good time. Hanging out with the homies, Blade West won't be as big as Blade Atlanta, from what I hear, so it won't be as stressful in terms of like 25,000 people walking around and, uh, you know, pressure to get all the shots kind of thing. It'll be more laid back, of course, we've got our commitments and obligations, but aside from that, it's going to be good. You know, I think it's going to be a good time to kind of meet up with makers, manufacturers, enthusiasts, and uh, it's going to be great. We're going to do a hangout. It's going to be a good time. I'll see y'all there. All right, what knives are you looking to get next? Um, I think this was an offshoot off of the Blade West question because right now I'm not really like looking for a knife, but I do have some grails in mind. Like first of which, uh, I really like the Null Knives Voodoo and Raiden. So I think I'm gonna have a look out for that. And also the production batches uh, are coming in. So you can start seeing that start coming out through social media. So 
I'm I'm stoked. Sean is doing his thing over at Null Knives, and it looks great. So uh, that's on the list. Uh, some grails I really want are the Koenig Mini Arius, and um, let's see, what was the other one? I think it was the Koenig Mini Goblin as well. Those are the two I'm looking for, but. Based on what I'm seeing, the prices are on the secondary. The Goblin or the Mini Areas prototype is going for like twelve hundred dollars, fourteen hundred dollars, and the Mini Goblin I think is going for something similar, like at a thousand dollars on the secondary. So I think table price is gonna be seven hundred. I think, I think that's that's what I'm seeing, but we'll see, we'll see. I mean, I have an open mind. Um, I'll prepare a budget, but I'm not like set in stone kind of thing. If it's not there, I'm not gonna be disappointed. You know what I mean? Uh, other than that, I don't have a Benchmade yet, so I'm looking into the Benchmade Bailout. I think that's a solid knife. I also think the Benchmade Full Immunity, it's a, it's a smaller one, but I really love the look and I feel like it'd be pretty nimble, especially in like an EDC pouch, kind of put in your pocket kind of thing. Uh, so those are those are the ones I'm looking at right now. Those are the ones I'm looking at. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, all right. Uh, what gear are you looking to get next? What gear are you looking to get next? Um, I think... The next thing I'm gonna be getting is probably to add to my filming setup, you know, and I think that's one of the questions here, so we'll talk about that later. But I think right now, in terms of gear, I'm pretty set just because as far as like EDC content creation goes, um, you are fortunate enough to be able to sample a lot of different types of gear. And so I've come a long way from like, you know, just reviewing the things I have around me that I bought myself and just shooting video of it to now having brands send out samples for me to try and talk about if I so choose uh, to full on commercial projects where them sending out their products is a given and I'm I'm producing stuff for them in the form of like hype reels, stuff like that. So needless to say, I got a ton of gear. My lady's really pissed off at me all the time because storage is a factor. Storage is, is an issue you know what i mean i only have this one room and it's starting to spill out to other parts of the house so <laughs> i gotta keep that in check so as far as gear goes nothing in terms of everyday carry unless something really strikes me as like really awesome that i want to try further i think the next thing is to probably improve my shooting setup either add more practical lighting or uh, build out my rig in such a way where you know a little attention to detail things start to uh, start to disappear. You know what I mean? Like, like uh, for example, if I mount my if I mount my top down angle of my camera to the table on which I am doing stuff, if I shake the table, it's gonna it's gonna shake the camera. So I might set up like an independent rig that's sitting on the floor. That way, whatever I'm doing on this table. You know, banging on gear, testing things out, breaking things, it's not gonna affect the camera and stuff like that. I think that's, he probably won't notice one way or another, but uh, it's perfectionist stuff, you know what I mean? Always strive to be better, always strive to learn more, you know what I'm saying? Um, next question, do I play video games? Yes, I do. In fact, um, I'm actually starting to dabble again just because um, I have a love-hate relationship with video games because I really like the challenge and so once I get started in one I really want to like knock out the next milestone knock out the next milestone and so I get sucked into it and before you know it I've spent 12 hours in front of the PC like, gaming trying to get the next rank or the next tier so you know I've had to like quit cold turkey a couple times and just kind of uninstall and put them away but I think I've reached this like healthy balance of being able to like crank out the work but also still take you know take breaks and play games and a lot of stuff and between golf and and dabbling here and there that's fine you know what i mean i'm playing apex legends on the pc by the way i'm not a console dude i don't have xbox i don't have playstation although i grew up a playstation guy I started with playstation 1 final fantasy 7 was my first game and uh love role playing games rpgs but i also am currently just gaming on my pc you know i'm playing um, apex legends on steam miso one up so if you see me in apex legends that's me and um other than that i think that's really it apex i, I played league for a long time but league just takes so much time like like one round one match would be like 45 minutes to an hour and i just simply don't have the bandwidth to like invest that much time and when i do it's far and in between so i'll suck bad you know what i mean and that'll make me want to improve and that'll make me sink more time into it and then it's a vicious cycle so i just need a game that i can like be satisfied with my abilities and uh you know pick up a game or two a round or two and just play and then be done you know it'd be like cut it get back to work kind of thing 
So that's me in video gaming. I hope you guys have a better uh, relationship with video gaming than I do because <laughs> it's not the best. <laughs> um, what do you or how do you film your content? Uh, a lot of ways, a lot of ways. Um, long form is like this. I have an angle on my desk. This is me talking. This is also my live stream setup and angle. So if you watch my live streams, this will be very familiar to you. And uh, honestly, the live stream angle ha has inspired this video, just because like I feel like live streams are really where I can have a candid conversation with y'all. And to be able to do this with a Q and A, with a Q and A, I think it, you know it's it's uh, comfortable. It it feels right. <laughs> but um, yeah, long form stuff, I'll do this. I have a B-roll studio table over there where I film all of my slow-mo stuff, studio shots, and uh, my top-down unboxings or feature breakdowns. I'll do all that over at that table, and that's the table I have. You know, my overhead rig where I'll attach this camera over there. Uh, to save time, uh, I've upgraded from one, like, key light to two now so I got one over there one over here I don't have to pick up the whole c-stand move it over and drop it down I used to do that and um, I, it was cool for a time but I think after a while I just couldn't I couldn't deal with it anymore so I had to like upgrade the setup um, Aside from that, you know, I'll vlog outside with a one wheel uh, and just kind of walk around, do my thing. I'm usually holding my camera with the Mantis pods. So I'll have that there. But, you know, 50% of the time, I don't even use the pod. Just because if you're holding it from the bottom and if your camera is heavier than, than the bulkiness of the pod, it feels off balance. So I just hold it. I just undersling it right here. I just hold it underneath the body. And then, what's up, y'all? You need to use a wide angle, 20 meters. 20 meters, 20 millimeters, and that way you can get me and the background, get some awesome bokeh stuff like that. So, um, that is how I film my content shorts, top downs. I use my B Studio table for the short form stuff too, but everything is on this camera for, for the most part, unless I'm doing some like run and gun stuff with the Apple smartphone. So, all right, what is your film setup? Okay, I. I don't know why I don't read a little farther down and combine some of these questions. All right, the film setup. I'm running my main rig. This is the Sony a7C. They discontinued that a few years ago, and now they have an a7C2. It's a7C Mark II in the wings. Um, I really want that camera. I don't know. I'm still, I still want an FX3 as well. It's Sony's cinema camera line, so I might pick that up for a, a second angle. I don't know. Who knows? But the main camera is the A7C. It's got a small rig cage as well as a top handle. Um, I've got the Falcam F22 uh, mounting system. So there are a bunch of like female male connectors that I put at the bottom or at the yeah at the bottom of every single piece of my gear. So whenever I need to mount it to a mount or mount it to a tripod, it's all using the same setup. So it's click in, click out. I don't have to screw in anything. I don't have to like you know mess around with a bunch of uh, quarter twenties or anything like that. It's very it's very fast and fluid. Uh, lighting is the Amaron 100X, I think. Yeah, from Aperture. That's my main light. Uh, I think I have a Godox light as well. Yes, SL60 Mark II D. And uh, they're both running light domes. What else? Oh, the microphone. Uh, so I'm actually using like my my live stream mic right now to kind of equalize and and make my voice sound buttery smooth right now. But uh, it takes the editing out of it because usually I need to tweak the audio in post on Premiere or DaVinci or whatever. But I have it running through like a like an what is it? like a digital equalizer so the output that you hear right now is what's coming out of there and it's the same with my live stream so it, it makes life easy I think right now the theme of my life right now is, is uh, make things as efficient as possible so I don't spend too much time doing the thing so there's that um, what else oh the mic itself this is a Maono I think it's a P200X I think let me, let me check real quick Mono PD PD 200X is the mic PD 200X. Uh, it's running like XLR connections to a Mono podcaster, and so that thing is is what I'm running my all my audio through for the live streams and stuff. Nothing serious. It just has some level changes, things in that. So it works out. 
Uh, I have a I have a, a Sure SM7B for the podcast setup. That's what I use to record the Carrie Config podcast. That's over there with its own little Scarlet Solo uh, audio interface. What else? I think that's it. And then all the accessories that comes with uh, doing this for a long time, like things that accumulate. You know what I mean? I've got extra batteries. I've got accessories like crazy, extra wires, extra ca- cables. I'm using the um, I'm using the DJI mic system, so that's been really helpful for on-the-go shooting and just to having my mic on me and and away from the camera if I need to get wider shots. I'm just not near the camera, stuff like that. So, man, I should have really listed it out beforehand. This is like a, a slog to listen to, but it's all good. You guys got it. <laughs> What's your editing setup look like? I edit with my PC. This is an AMD PC. It is running, I think it's running a 5800X processor. Uh, it's got 32 gigs of RAM, and I've got an ancient graphics card in there. It's the NVIDIA GTX. 1080 bro we're in the 4000 series and i'm still running a 1080 it's it's doing it (laughs) but the 4k footage is making it it's it's making it work so i'm looking for an upgrade sooner rather than later hopefully black friday has some good deals this year might just have to upgrade but that's the rig i'm working on i've got dual monitors here Uh, i think the next question is software so i'm just gonna knock that out right now uh the software i'm using right now is davinci resolve that's the software that i've noticed takes the least amount of ram like with premiere pro i edit my carry config podcast with premiere pro because i gotta do it in tandem with brandon edm and he uses premiere and for the longest time i use premiere as well but it got to a point where i had to make proxies on my pc like I couldn't work with the full-size files. I had to make dummy files out of the full-size files so that they're easier to manipulate and edit. And then when you go to render, the software pulls data from the original full-size files to finish the edit and render that out. But while you're editing, you're using dummy files. So that whole process was just another step in the workflow and it took hours sometimes, depending on how much footage I had, 4K footage. So uh, DaVinci Resolve, just whatever magic happens in there, it just crunches that data a lot more effortlessly and, and more fluidly. So I can just pop it in and start editing as opposed to needing to do that whole proxy step. Um, and I, I like the uh, I like the controls. You know, I've been learning DaVinci and uh, the controls for editing. There's different pages for each step of the workflow. And it's, it's a pretty powerful piece of software and it's free, which is wild. So if y'all are trying to get into content creation, Resolve is free. You know, go ahead, download it, start messing around with it. There's a bunch of tutorials on YouTube. That's exactly how I learned DaVinci Resolve. Uh, why am I so obsessed with Ultim? What do you mean? What do you mean I'm obsessed with Ultim? Are you, are you, is that a joke? Is that a joke? Why, why are you saying such a thing? Why are you making accusations that I'm obsessed with a certain type of material that EDC items and fidget toys and pocket art are being made out of? Why would you say something like that without doing your due diligence and really realizing where I'm coming from with this? I mean, (laughs) um, I don't know, man. It just looks cool. It looks really awesome. It's got depth to it. Uh, The channel colors are, you know, golden raw, like amber color, gray and black. So I think it just really jumped out at me when I first saw it being used for certain things. And I don't know, man, it just looks great. And, you know, once you dive deeper into the material, you learn that it is functional. It's a thermoplastic that's super resistant to high temperatures. So for like the medical industry, when things have to constantly be sanitized, steam, this and that, it has great functionality. Uh, It's strong, so uh, it can be machined a lot thinner than some of the other comparable polymer materials that are out there. So it really kind of opens up the possibilities on what you can make with Ultim. You can make really intricate parts, small parts, and not have to worry about structural integrity. And it's cool to see it being incorporated into EDC knives and other, you know, EDC gear like fidget toys and pocket art, stuff like that. So, but at the end of the day, man, I just love how it looks. Like, jeez, I'm gonna have to take this apart and show you what's inside. This is the Pixel Co. Alt F Honey Pot Edition, Ultim keycaps, Ultim body. Very clicky, very fun. But yeah, that's why I'm obsessed with Ultim. And it's a cool name Ultim, the ultimate material Ultim. Sounds so cool. <laughs> How much gear do you get as a content creator? A lot. Oh boy, a lot. Because, like, the expectation is like, 
I mean, it just depends on who you're talking to and what kind of brands are asking you for things. Um, it can range from brands who are looking to get a piece of product reviewed. So they'll send it out to you to keep, you give them your first thoughts and post a video about it. Other times it's more open-ended. It's just like, hey, check this out. Let me know what you think. And you kind of have to trust the process as a brand. Like, you know, stand by your product. If it's a good product, which you are confident that it is, they're gonna like it. They're gonna post about it. And it's more organic that way. And it kind of goes through. And then finally this commercial product projects as well you know I'm doing this full time so I gotta be able to feed the children I gotta be able to put food on the table keep the roof over my head and, and carry my weight you know what I mean so there are gonna be commercial projects that I want to be a part of that I end up signing on to and products are just part of the bargain you know what I mean like they gotta send you stuff for you to take photos of and take video of and at the end of the day it accumulates a lot we just got a huge shipment um, it's a lot of uh, storage that I'll be implementing into the office, the home studio, and I'm stoked to be able to do that because I have too much stuff everywhere. <laughs> it's a mess, it's a mess. You come in here and you think it's, you'll think it's a storage unit in a lot somewhere because there's so much crap here. But uh, I'm doing my best. I do wanna pick up a Husky like workbench, kind of put it behind this table right here because that would be the perfect area. It'll be facing the B-roll area where I can just pull out all my gear. You know, all the watches will be there. All the knives will be in another drawer. All the wallets will be in another drawer. And I think it'll 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 shake out nicely. So uh, looking forward to that. Uh, let's see. How did you decide to be a content creator? Uh, I think, like I said earlier, I just always been a creative person. And I think the pandemic, there was a silver lining in that experience that we were all a part of as, as a as a world, as a globe. Um, that, you know, everyone was locked down for the sake of safety. And because of that, you kind of get creative with how you want to spend your time and how you want to, you know, make life interesting because everyone's locked down, everyone's trapped inside. So I always wanted to get in front of the camera. I always wanted to see if, you know, shooting video was something I would like or be passionate about. And so come lockdown time, I was like, all right, well, I'm not doing anything. Might as well get out there and do some stuff. And lo and behold, I had fun. It was a good time. And at that time, I just had my smartphone. I think I had a really old a Canon Rebel from Costco. I think it was like a bundle deal. And, um, you know, I started shooting with that, got excited, started shooting some more, and then started learning the editing software, the photos, the video, started posting. My first video was ass, and uh, I love every second of it. <laughs> so go back, watch that, and see. We've come a long way. I think we've come a long way, and I'm always trying to improve and be better. So I think when the views started coming the subscribers like you yourself if you haven't subscribed and you like everyday carry content make sure you gently tap that subscribe button and join in on all the fun notifications on but uh <laughs> once the viewers and subscribers started coming in i think that's that was the turning point for me i was like all right people are into it let's keep going let's be consistent let's grow and uh it's been a great journey so far. I've been able to do a lot of crazy stuff to me, a lot of crazy stuff that I never thought I could ever be doing just, you know, five years ago. So, uh, love it. I'm going to keep going and uh, it's going to be a great time. So I think, I think to answer the question, it's just, you kind of really have to take stock of where you're at and what you want to, what you want to do and where you want to be. And then once that becomes apparent to you and you keep thinking about it and you keep visioning, you keep envisioning it and keep dreaming about it a path will open up and you'll find a way there. So that's me. How did you figure out how to live stream? Um, well, I had great resources. Uh, Brandon EDM, Everyday Minimalist, he used to live stream a lot. So when I was starting, he uh, helped kind of demystify all the things, the logistical stuff uh, that allows you to stream well. You know, the audio part, the video part, the streaming software and connecting everything as sources and scenes, all that stuff uh, was, it was very helpful because he had a lot of tips to provide. But I think the biggest thing with live streaming is to put in the reps. You know what I mean? Because I don't think I was very good at improvising. I still, you know, say ums a lot. I still hesitate. But we're going on 31 live streams now. We'll be doing our 32nd pretty soon. By the time you see this, it might be more. But, you know, you put 30 reps in and each live stream, you decide, hey, I'm going to fix one thing. I'm going to improve one thing. Maybe it's the lighting. Maybe it's the audio. Maybe it's your personality. Maybe it's, you know, you want to talk a little more. You want to talk a little less. 
You want to have topics prepared, stuff like that. And then slowly, slowly, you get better at it and better at it. You you are able to talk on the fly a lot more, interact with the chat a lot more quickly and effortlessly and fluidly. And that's how you live stream. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's crazy. And I think the biggest thing you got to get over is that, yeah, real live people are going to be watching you as you're doing it. And so it's hard to kind of like envision in your mind, man, I got to talk nonstop for half an hour, for one hour, for two hours. How did these people do it? But you should gotta try, you know what I mean? Like we're all humans, we all talk. And so because of that, we've, all, we've been talking all our lives. You know what I mean? So the skill is there. You just gotta like get yourself in the context of everyday carry and, and just start being able to like draw on those topics quickly. But yes, live streaming, very fun. Tune in Wednesday nights. One backpack for the rest of your life, what would it be? Oh, that's tough. I, uh, I think, my first gut instinct is a mystery ranch backpack because the straps are so comfortable. Uh, the opening is very useful because there's the Y, the Y enclosure where you can unzip the top, reach in, grab whatever you want. But for easy in, easy out, you can unzip it the long ways and it opens up just like a duffel. So you can access things on the quote unquote bottom of your backpack just as quickly as you're able to access things from the top. So that's very uh, useful. Uh, the materials are all on point because I know Mystery Ranch makes, um, you know, soft goods for the military. And so they, the quality, the uh, resilience there is tried and true. And I, you know, I've, I've used the Urban Assault uh, what is it? The three day urban assault 21 liter. I have a few of those for different purposes and it's very comfortable. I love it. So I think that would be the one mystery ranch. I'll probably go with a 24 liter instead of a 21 liter, because if we're going lifetime, I want to be able to have more versatility there, but yes, 24 liter, uh, one knife for the rest of your life. What would it be? So I know the right answer to this question, but I haven't lived it to you know be able to speak on it from a practical point of view but i think it would be a fixed knife because you know if we're talking life you're gonna need a big hunk of steel that you're gonna be able to sharpen year after year and maintain year after year and with flippers you know it's cool and all but you gotta think like 20 years 30 years 40 years from now chances are the flipping mechanism is gonna fail uh, you're gonna get some sand in there you're gonna get something in there you're gonna drop it a few too many times it's gonna break it's gonna crack and uh, to have a full tang fixed blade, one hunk of metal that you're able to, you know, work and machine and adjust and maintain over the long run, I think that's probably going to be the one that sticks with you. So, and coming to the second part of my answer, I have not carried a fixed blade ever. I have one, and that's a Pete's Pirate Knife, and I've never carried it because I'm just like, wow, this looks cool. But practically speaking, I always reach for a flipper or like even a Milwaukee fastback. You know what I mean? Like this, this is so easy. But you know, as you can probably deduce, you know, this is probably gonna fail 20, 30, 40 years down the line. So I really have to start carrying a fixed knife and just kind of see how it goes. You know what I mean? Get a nice, get a nice like Kydex sheath. Go from there. And finally, what can we expect from you in the next year? Oh, we got a lot of stuff. We got a lot of stuff going on. Um, as you all know, the videos are coming. Trying to be consistent always with the long form. Once a week, at least. I want to ramp up to two times a week just to, so you guys have a little more to chew, a little more to work with. Short form is an ever-growing thing in our space. So going for one piece of short form every single day, you know what I mean? And uh, it's gonna be fun, it's gonna be fun. I have a lot of things planned for the upcoming holiday season. We all know what's gonna pop off Black Friday. We got Blade West right around the corner. You're gonna see a few vlogs, a few videos from there. And of course, it's it's the big holiday season coming up. You know what I mean? All the deals, all the gift guides, all the loadouts, you're gonna see all of that. But uh, most importantly, we're gonna have fun. You know what I mean? Like, I just want to keep making enjoyable, entertaining content for you guys. And of course, please sound off in the comments. Let me know what you like, what you don't like, what ideas you might have for me, what other questions you might have for me for an upcoming Q&A session just like this one. But I want to hear it. I want to know. And, um, you know, we're working on merch on our side as well, just because I know a lot of y'all live the live with purpose mantra. And I commend you and admire you for doing that day in and day out. Custom tailoring your gear to suit your needs. No more, no less. 
that is a live with purpose way and so i know a lot of y'all are living that way one way or another and you know the re's that i release you know with the version one the version two that you see right here these are just little reminders little re's for you to slap on your gear for you to constantly be reminded of the fact that you know you are living with purpose you have a purpose you serve so to keep whatever it is that's motivating you in mind and allow you to kind of curate your loadout to suit that purpose without any excess, without any lacking. Lacking here, I need to really start carrying knives and stuff more. But, you know, do the thing. Live with purpose. And we got more armies coming up. I got some hoodies planned because like I said, I love oversized cozy hoodies for when it gets a little colder. So uh, we're working on that, we're working on that. Maybe you'll see something soon. Maybe you'll see something soon. But cheers to you thank you for sticking through all this time 20 questions i hope you guys had a great time uh getting to know me a little more and hearing the answers to some of the most frequently asked questions by you guys on the live streams in the dms in the comments all that stuff so i wouldn't be able to do what i'm doing today without each and every one of y'all support so thank you so much i appreciate you watching this stuff make sure you hit that like button and subscribe and i'll see you again real soon Live streams, Wednesday nights. I'll see you there. Little Purpose. Peace.